Diaz. This is Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele Report. And this one is for February 10th of 2015. I am in the Forest of the Forgotten Temple down here outside Palenque. And I hope you can hear me through the howler monkeys. Uh, it's a little crowded out here. Basically, there's a very small percentage of these temples that are actually uncovered and open for viewing. So we're going through the jungle here to discover some of the lost forgotten temples. In the meantime, yeah, right now, of course we're digging and investigating the lost and forgotten temples because the moon is in Scorpio. <laughs> it stays in Scorpio until Thursday, goes into Sagittarius, and then on Saturday, Capricorn, finally on Monday, Aquarius. So we have this square moon, the third quarter square moon. Moon at 23 degrees Scorpio, sun at 23 degrees Aquarius. And I gotta say, besides that, and besides the moon making all of these different aspects as it moves through Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, and Aquarius, there are no other major exact aspects going on. So we do have the Uranus is still square Pluto, Saturn is still square Neptune, the Sun is still opposite Jupiter, but not to the exact degrees, not to the exact minutes. So I think I'm going to talk a little bit about that, because this coming week you may feel this energy a little bit of a different shift yes in the energy as a result of no exact aspects well, let's look at what that means both now and in your natal birth chart and maybe I'll try to find a nice temple or something to have a good background let's see okay I found a spot you see the forgotten temple behind me it's called the Forgotten Temple Deep in the Jungle. <laughs> it's, it's quite a journey out here. Anyway, what I didn't say is that Mercury goes direct tomorrow. Yes! Thank God! <laughs> it's been three weeks of Mercury retrograde. I am sure you have all been feeling it. In Aquarius, an air sign computers, internet, iPhones, cars, communications, emails, just conversations kind of going haywire, going wacko, going north, south, east, west, but like very difficult to go straight forward direct. Yeah? So that retrograde mercury has, you know, kind of put a halt on things. To get things together, Aquarius is a fixed sign. We want to get ourselves together. And now, as of tomorrow, it goes direct and things are going to start moving forward again. The only thing that I really wanted to bring out so much in this report is this nature of the no aspects. And I was, you know, I'm with a group of people. I was talking on the bus today, you know, with, you know, one of the folks here about their unaspected planet. When you have an unaspected planet in your natal chart, and now when we have, you know, not so many planets, you know, in aspect, it's also the void of course moon. The void of course moon is when the moon is in the last degrees of a sign, she doesn't make any aspects until she goes into the next sign. That's called a void of course moon. And, and astrologers always go, well, don't act, don't do things on a void of course moon. And when we look at these, you know, unaspected planets in the birth chart or where the chart is now, what that says is these aspects basically, I mean, I, I describe planets as psycho-spiritual functions. Mercury, the way that we think with our left brain in a linear logical way, yeah? Mars, the way that we act. These are just functions that we have. And these planets function differently depending upon which sign they're in. And they are directed according to the house that they are in. And when they are aspecting each other, they are linked 
they are connected by some harmonic energy. Yeah, the trine's the third harmonic, square's the fourth harmonic, sextile is the sixth harmonic. <laughs> and you go all the way up, you know, you can, you can do the twelfth harmonic. So we can get into quintiles, biquintiles, sesquiquadrates, there's all kinds of aspects that these planets can be making. Some are called major, three, four, and six, two, three, four, and six. And of course the conjunction, and what is it? It's like the way that we are hardwired. When you wire up a house, you know, you've got these, you know, the wiring going through the walls, connecting, you know, the light switch to the light, you know, in the kitchen and in the living room and, you know, connecting, you know, the whole house is wired. Well, we are all wired. <laughs> Some of us are more wired than others. <laughs> but anyway, when you have an unaspected planet, it's left out of the wiring. You get it. You know, it's like, whoa, there's no aspects, there's no, it's not connected. So when the moon is void, of course, it's not making any aspects. It's not connected, and that's why the astrologers go, hey, you know, step back, hang on, wait a minute. You want that moon connected. Yeah, you need that lunar energy, you know, for a successful endeavor or enterprise. So, you know, these are times that I could say when there's like no direct major aspects happening in the sky this week, it can be a time when we all kind of feel disconnected, where we all feel kind of like, hey, scratching our heads, you know, where was, where was I going? What, what am I doing? It's like 52 card pickup. All the cards are up in the air, disconnected. So, I mean, it's a good thing Mercury's going direct, thank God. <laughs> if Mercury was still retrograde and we still had no aspects, there'd still be this like, ah, what the bleep is going on? So, we could also look at it, if you want to look at it in a positive way, in a light way. It's almost like everybody's been saying, well, when is, you know, the stress going to let up and when is this intensity going to slow down and, we're not, and life isn't going to feel like such a... Uh. Well, you know, this may also be a week where, you know what, throw up your hands, throw up your arms, you know, you know, go hear some music, go sit by the river. Uh, you know, it's, it's just like, you know, if you're feeling disconnected, if you're feeling disjointed, and this is true also with unaspected planets in your natal chart, you need to consciously, yes, with yourself, with your spiritual intention, reach out to that planet. It's like you have to find that planet. You have to find that connection. You have to wire that planet in using your conscious intention because it's not just automatic. It's not a given. So this is a time where the, you know, this week is about using our enlightened energy, using our consciousness. And we are active elements, yes, in the wiring. So it's a time of rewiring. You know, people talk about this restructuring at a cellular level of our DNA and the matrix within us and, you know, the whole helix going on and changing and shifting and, and this is a time when this can be happening within us and we what we're thinking you know and, and what state we're in are we in a state of gratitude appreciation resentment bitterness the feelings you know and our consciousness is what does the wiring or not so we may stay and feel spaced out, disconnected, not go anywhere, go into victim, or we can dance to the, you know, to the flow of the river and take advantage of the opportunity afforded us at these times to consciously really focus and penetrate our intentions towards integrating Yes, all the unwired aspects of our total self. And this is what we call living life with ease and grace. 
I used to be a Waldorf teacher and we would do the pentathlon. It was a, a, a recreation of the old Olympic Games with the fifth graders, you know. And the judges, one of the, one of the things that they would score on was beauty, grace, and style. <laughs> So how the guy throws the javelin or how the girl, you know, does the shot put or runs around the track wasn't just who won. It wasn't just all about speed, but you could also get these points for beauty, grace, and style. And this is a time in our lives with all the, all the stress or all the disjointed communications or all the challenging, you know, it's really a measure, you know, of our capacity. It's a measure of our evolution, how we can move through these times with beauty, grace, and style. <laughs> so the mantra for this week is, sometimes I keep it together, sometimes I fall apart. If I stay in a space of grace, and joy. My life becomes living art. Just let that sink in a little bit. Sit with that. Feel what that feels like. If I stay in a space of grace and joy, my life becomes living art. It's like, it's like, you know, despite what comes and what flows, it's the measure of who we are, how we manage the flow. It may be a waterfall, it may be whitewater rapids, it may be still water, but let's do it with grace and beauty. And, you know, it, 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 it all goes a little better that way, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I keep it together. Sometimes I fall apart. If I stay in a space of grace and joy, my life becomes living art. May you tap in to the living artist within yourself and spend this week with beauty, grace, and style. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.